So uh, for the audience, uh, for people in the audience, um, you might find it difficult to uh, remember the speakers' names because in a, a true Chinese fashion, that uh, the Chinese family names are very, very um, popular, uh, especially the first session. Uh, let me <laughs> so um, let me introduce um, um, the first Dr. Lee, the f one of the three Dr. Lees in the first um, <laughs> uh, first session. Um, Dr. Sheng Li. Um, it's important to remember both the first name and the last name for Chinese speakers. <laughs> uh, the first speaker is Dr. Shen Li from Peking University, and uh, his title is Reward Modulation of um, Attention and Working Memory in the Human Brain. Yeah. Okay, Boris. Right, uh, thank you uh, for, uh, for the introduction, introduction from Dr. Lin, and it's my pleasure to be here. Actually, this is my first time visit MIT and also Boston. So uh, we had a tour yesterday, and it was really wonderful. I enjoyed it a lot. Very much. And uh, my talk uh, is about a reward modulation in on attention and working memory in the human brain. And we have done this work in the past about two or three years. And here we just report two studies. Hopefully, I can finish. But otherwise, if the time is is tight, so at least I can finish one. Okay. So uh, I will first uh, brief introduce the interaction between reward and tension and some recent studies. And uh, as we knew that reward is the most significant motivational reinforcer. And it can be in many forms. For example, the food if we are uh, starving, or the money in our daily life, or some kind of personal achievement such as Michael Phelps and eight gold medals in Beijing Olympics. So we knew that reward can increase our motivation significantly. And reward and behavior. So uh, back to 100 years ago, uh, Sondag proposed that re uh, in his uh, law of effect that responses to a rewarding situation will be strengthened and become habitual. And later, the behaviorism in their operant uh, conditioning theory, they propose that behavior can be modified by the consequences, which is the reward and punishment. However, behaviorism only allowed in their uh, experimental paradigm, only allowed the explanation based on observable behavior of people and animal. Only the stimulus uh, response association matters. Uh, but uh, we don't know the internal mechanism of the association of reward in our psychology science area. And so we knew that select, selective attention uh, is or helps go directed behavior by improving the representation of task irrelevant stimuli. And the its expectation of reward modulates the uh, motivational engagement of task and affect perception and attention, as suggested by recent studies. But uh, ap apart from the top-down attentional selection, the bottom-up factors also have been shown to capture attention by the physically salient items. And here are some examples. Uh, for example, the Simple orientation of Carlos Singleton can capture attention very well, which is the kind of uh, very known pop out effect. And the ceiling map, the priority ceiling map, can also show that the bottom up attention affects our daily life. Uh, to something about reward, in this picture, if you fix this kind of the drink chef in the supermarket, a Chinese customer can be captured by the famous the red can of herbal tea. However, may, he may even ignore the people in, sitting in front of the, the de desk. So the reward associated item is very important for our behavior because 
for this customer, customer the association between the right kind, the pattern, and the good taste they have experienced before has been established, established repeatedly before. Uh, to investigate this kind of effect, there are few studies has been done re in recent years. Mm, this one study has been done by, by Anderson in Yandis lab, and they have shown that the previous learned reward association during the visual search uh, task can capture attention, even though the, uh, this capture, capturing of attention contradicts to the current goal. So in their study, they have the target in this uh, diamond shape, but the color of high reward associated uh, distractor can actually decrease uh, the re reaction time of the visual search task. In uh, another study by Hickey in uh, Tew's lab, they have shown that if the color of the reward, uh, the target and the distractor swapped uh, between tries, and if the previous trial was highly rewarded, the performance of the later trial could be impaired. So that means the previously uh, rewarded act trials or color can actually impair the performance of the observer. And this is really counterproductive and uh, which lead to unsuboptimal performance. And this ERG study, they found that this kind of reward capturing effect is associated with the P1 and the N2PC components uh, in the ERP form. So this is kind of early uh, neural signature of attentional selection. That means the reward's history can really in influence its attention. So our study, our first study, was to investigate how the learned reward association improves the visual work memory. So our question is, first, the reward association, we knew that it leaves memory traces for guiding attention. And we also knew that attention interacts extensively with visual work memory. So our question was, can the reward association improve improve visual work memory performance for the task at hand. And if we observe this kind of uh, improvement, which kind of mechanism can account for it? So there was two options or two possible mechanisms. One was the space-based attentional capture effect which has been observed by other researchers. And the second would be the feature-based attentional modulation. So, uh, we knew that the, uh, this kind of classical study have shown, uh, shown us the viral work memory have limited capacity. So it's kind of approximately four atoms can be stored in our work memory. And in our uh, study, we established the reward association, which is association between the reward and color in the visual search training session, just like what has been done in Anderson's study. So in the visual search training, one target color was always associated with high reward of, of uh, monetary uh, uh, payment, and one color would be associated with low reward. And the subject was not informed about the reward color association. So they just repeatedly performed the visual search task and to establish this kind of association. And of course, uh, in our study, the subject uh, improved their visual search performance along with the training progress. And before the training session, before and after training session, we use a paradigm of change detection to test whether the visual working memory performance uh, improved between uh, after the training session for the high reward social color. So the, uh, in the change detection task, the observers has to indicate whether the orientation of the 
one of the eight bars in the display has changed their orientation. And there's prop queue for this. Uh, our results have shown that the detection sensitivity improved. And this improved was significantly higher for the high reward associated item compared to the low reward uh, associated item and the control colors. And our analysis have shown that this kind of sensit uh, sensitivity improvement cannot be accounted by the decision criterion changes. So uh, one, ask, one question we, we would like to ask was whether this kind of improvement was due to the attentional capture effect. So we analyzed the trials when the high reward social color was distractor compared to the trials the low reward associated color was distractors. And we found no significant difference. That means at least for, from this analysis, no capture effect was observed when the high reward associated color was a distractor. And in our uh, change detection task in the post session test, we actually include a separate one in which a physically salient bar was uh, among the, search dis uh, the, the detection display. And according to the physical ceiling uh, theory, this kind of physical ceiling uh, item will attract your at attention. And so if it happens, then the change detection performance will be higher for this, this thicker bar, the physical ceiling bar. However, we found no significant difference between the physical ceiling bar and the non ceiling bar. So no capture effect was observed. And the other thing we would like to do is to validate the physical settings of the seeker bar in our test. So we ask another group of subjects to perform a visual search task. So with seeker bar in the search display. And we found that the seeker bar was indeed salient. So the reaction time for the seeker bar, the physical salient item, was significantly faster than the non salient item. And we also performed another change detection task for the seeker bar, in which we vary the SOA, which is the temporal dif uh, interval between the sample display and the test display. And the result showed that if the SOA was short, then there was a significant physical uh, saliency effect for the thicker bar. But if the SOA was longer and the same as we used in our main experiment, there was no significant difference. So uh, this demonstrates that uh, this is the prolonged the sample display and the extended SOA between the sample and the test display to prevent the significant saliency effect for our seeker bar in the main experiment. However, the, our reward associated item can overcome this shortage and still uh, exhibit the significant reward effect. So the next question would be, if this is not attentional capture effect, then whether this is the, uh, it can be contributed by the kind of select history because the high reward and low reward item was always selected as target during the training. So we perform another control experiment in which the observers also perform the visual search task, but they didn't receive any monetary re uh, reward. They, what they received was just correctness of their response. And for this control experiment, we found no significant advantage for the items and the color served as target during the training. So that means the selection history cannot account for our observed re reward effect. So the last control experiment, we test the feature-based attention modulation in this paradigm. So in the change detection task, we minimize the capture effect by presenting the same color 
in the sample and test display. So for example here, this, this is the red color for the high reward uh, item, and this color was for all the items, items in the sample display and the test display. In this way, there was no color difference between the bars, so there was no, no possibility that the color, one of the colors capture attention. So this is the result. Again, we found that the detect, detection sensitivity improvement was larger for the item associated with high reward. And this result demonstrate, demonstrate that this is the, the feature, the reward associated feature the subject learned during the training that contribute to the improvement in the visual working memory performance. We, all, we all also did awareness test. So the subject <coughs> was asked uh, uh, whether they have remember there was a color reward association during the training. So we want to know whether the color reward was learned ex explicitly by the observers. And we also asked our subject, subjects to read their confidence, confidence level after their choice. And the results show that there was no significant difference between the correctness, on the correctness between the high reward and low reward color. However, there was significant difference when the subject rating the confidence level. Uh, and that means a uh, few of our subjects actually uh, ex explicitly learn the reward color association and provide a very high confidence, confidence level for their choice. And uh, to validate that the awareness of the, the reward color association uh, cannot account for the reward effect we observed for the viral working memory. We do an another analysis and the result showed that there was no significant difference between the explicit and implicit group. And if we remove this, uh, those few uh, subjects who learn the reward as color association explicitly, and there was similar result obtained. So the awareness of the association doesn't matter for the, the observed reward effect. So it comes to our second study. The, in this study, we tried to investigate uh, if the learned reward association serve as a better template for rejection. So the question we asked was, the learned reward stimulus association, firstly, it stored in memory, and we knew that the memory guided attention, modulate attention in opposite way. In one way, guide attention, it can guide attention towards the memorized item, and it can also guide attention away from the memorized item. So we would like to ask, can stored reward stimulus association be flexibly used to engage and disengage, disengage attention? And we borrow the idea from previous studies on the template for re rejection. Uh, few studies uh, on this topic have shown that in, if the subject was instructed to remember one color, and in the subsequent visual search task, they were instructed to look for or ignore the items with the remembered color, uh, some interesting result had appeared. So intuitively, if the subject was supposed to remember a color and instruct to looking for this color in the visual search task, you will see a, this kind of positive cue can increase the performance. That means the re react time reduced. However, they also found that if the subject was in, 
instructed to ignore the memory item, and the which is negative Q. And in this case, the reaction time can also be reduced compared to the neutral Q condition. So that means the if the item was stored in the working memory, it can serve as a template for rejection to help the performance of the real search. So we perform a similar study investigating whether the reward associated item or feature can serve as a template template for rejection better. So we uh, in this experiment, we use the similar visual search training paradigm. And once the reward color association has been established, we test the subject uh, in three in two ways. Firstly, in first group of subject, subject, we ask the subject to remember one of the two colors, which is the high reward associated or the low reward associated. In the following visual search task, they were instructed to ignore the remembered color. And our result showed that the high reward associated color was reje rejected faster. That means the high reward associated color of feature can serve as the uh, template for rejection better can compared to the control or low reward associated color. And we did another test in, in which we, because the previous test, we, we used a symmetric display for the search display, uh, for the visual search. And in second test, we uh, <coughs> destroy these kinds of symmetry uh, symmetry, and we ask the subject to remind one color, and then during the visual search, they <coughs> are supposed to ignore this color and find target in another color. And finally, they are supposed to report their result, uh, the remember the color. And again, this uh, the second test also show that the high reward associated color was rejected faster compared to the low reward color and no distracted color. We also recorded the ERP re uh, signal from our subjects. And the ERP result have shown that there was a significant reward effect for the frontal P2, which is P2A component in front of electrode. And this is the differential activation between the high minus control color, high reward minus low reward color, and low minus control. So these kinds of uh, maps show that this differential activity happen in the frontal regions, which is uh, related to the cognitive uh, executive control. And we also found that there was significant reward effect in the posterior P3 component, which is P3B here, in the central parietal, parietal, and the occipital parietal electrode. And this is the differential activation uh, between the different rewarding conditions. In the, and this shows that this kind of uh, differential activation was in the posterior area. And previous, previous study have suggested that the P2-3 component uh, was related to feature-based attention or emotional signif significance or the degree of perceptual memory matching. And the P2-3 component was correlated with attentional sources of working memory updating and consolidation and also modulated by the motivational settings, which is the case in our study. And this result have shown that the reward effect on P2A and P3B show parallel changes in relation to the behavior events. And importantly, this reward association induced stronger but not weaker representation during the Q period. 
it's going to finish. So we come to the summary. For, OK, for we summary two study together. Uh, first, our reward association uh, showed that it can significantly improve VRU working memory performance. And the reward effect in VRU working memory can neither be counted by space-based attentional capture nor by task strategy related to the selection history. And the learned reward association can facilitate perceptual representation of high reward associated items through feature-based attentional modulation. Our observers' awareness on the reward association differ across individuals and observed the improvement in VRWORK memory was not influenced by this individual variability. And this effect might unlie the well-known unconscious pursuit of value, which is subliminal motivation that is embedded in the human behavior, but we need further investigation on this issue. We also show that the reward association facilitates the research performance via active rejection of high reward associated feature. And these kinds of reward association can adaptively facilitate task performance by attracting, modulating, and inhibiting attentions. So the take home message was reward associated items have advantage to be represented, rep, rep, represented in real working memory and thus be used more readily in executive control. So this, the majority of the experiment was done by uh, Meng Yuan Gong, who is sitting here, and help with Fei Tong Yang, who was a uh, research assistant in my lab. All right, thank you. Uh, that's showing that's shown a relationship between working memory capacity and fluid intelligence in oh. people. Uh, and, so, and, and I was noticing that a lot of your error bars are very large, suggesting there's a lot of individual variability in, mm -hmm. in all these kinds of measures. And I wondered if you thought about whether just variations in, in the fluid intelligence that people bring to tasks like this is explaining some of the variability that you see across. Actually, actually, we did analysis, which I didn't show here. And uh, we, we, we did a correlational analysis between the, for the first study between the observed reward effect and the working memory capacity of the subjects. And we do find a, well, a positive correlation, a significant correlation between these. However, I don't, I, I'm not sure if this can be extended to the flowing intelligence issue. Uh, well, uh, there was, okay, I think there was uh, studies uh, in, in past few years about the subliminal motivation, which was quite uh, controversial. And, but I think uh, if these kinds of subliminal motivation exist and it must be, uh, it could be conveyed by uh, the just long term memory stored reward uh, stimuli association. And maybe this kind of association can play some role when they perform the kind of task. But yeah, it's not, <laughs> not sure yet. Yeah. Um, so, as I, if I understood it correctly, mm. uh, in fact, your working memory is tested after all the trainings, right? So your so-called uh, attention is Oops, associated sorry. directly only with uh, the training, and then you, is that right? Rewarding. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we test the VRM work memory capacity before and after training. So, and it was the the incre uh, improvement. Uh, yeah, you see improvement. So yeah. I was wondering, though, so how you, um, uh, I'm not, how, how you, with the working memory, the conclusion of the working memory, how is it really just associated with those early memory that formed, or in fact, how that associated with the attention, how this took? Okay, uh, uh, I think uh, because uh, when we use the 
change detection task. Uh, this kind of classic, classic, classical paradigm for testing VROC memory. The, 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 the interval between the sample and test, test display was about 100, uh, 1.5 seconds. And this period is much longer than the short uh, sensory memory can last. So it's not going to be, it, can, uh, it cannot be the sensory memory. And uh, so your yeah, second question was, uh, uh, so I'm just wondering that, uh, so, uh, so the, uh, the, maybe I misunderstood, so your rewarding is also after training, you give the reward and that will enhance the okay, oh, okay. performance or not? During the training and uh, for each trial, they perform the visual search task and the, the target of the, the visual search task was horizontal or uh, vertical bar and there was color circle surrounding the bar. But the subject, uh, but this color circle was task irrelevant to the visual search task. It just, uh, it just have the association, a correlation between the color and the search target, and the monetary reward that you receive after each trial.